Welcome to Coffee Talk with Liquid Shano 1973, an inspirational podcast about the ups and downs of life and everything in between. Here's your host, Shane Lakita. Good morning, friends. Good morning, family. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Coffee Talk with Liquid Shano 1973. You guys know I'm the host. I'm here. This is just another solo session for me because I got a lot on my brain. And I wanted to get it out there. You know, there's been a lot going on. I really hope I, I've received so much great feedback on the last podcast that we just had, the interview that I had with the veteran and Ty Watson, and the ability to be able to sit down and talk about some of the veterans' issues that we have, some of the mental health issues that we have, some of the struggles that men have in society, including just people in general, and being able to get the help and reach out for the help that's needed. So first of all, thank you for listening to that episode. Thank you for sharing that episode, and thank you for talking about it. I really appreciate the fact that we have an, uh, an ability to have a forum that we can sit down and have conversations and talk to each other about stuff that just matters and stuff that we are struggling with or stuff that we need to talk about to be able to put one foot in front of the other and do all the things that we want to do. Now, today's episode is going to be all about a couple, well, it's actually going to be a couple things, right? So yesterday, which was the 13th of August, as many of you know through social media that follow me on social media platforms, it was the one-year anniversary of my dad who passed last year. Now, anybody that listened to the podcast last year knew I took a little bit of a break around that time frame, but I also checked in and I was able to really navigate through what the feelings were around losing a parent at any time, right? No matter what age we're at, no matter where we're at, when you lose a parent, it's always such a difficult thing. Well, I really didn't realize on how difficult it was going to be yesterday when I, when I sat back and I just took a look at the overall perspective of the fact that it's been a year since I've lost my dad uh, to the debilitating and disgusting disease called Alzheimer's, which I hope that we are further along and really finding a cure for soon because it's just debilitating and it's really deadly and it's it's just one of those situations that I don't want anybody to ever have to f go through any of the stuff that we went through with my father but there are a lot of people that are going through it and my heart goes out to everybody so yesterday was a was a reflective day it was a day where I sat back and I said to myself okay you know I know it's been a year. I know it's another one of the anniversaries, and that's one of the things that I've been struggling with the whole entire time. So literally the whole entire year since that's happened, everything has been a first, right? It's been my first Easter without my dad. It's been our first Christmas without my dad. It was our first Halloween without my dad. It was first anything, any holidays, any big events, any anniversaries, birthdays, or whatever, all was kind of like in that with that secondary note that was always put on all these different events that were going on was is without my dad. And not to say that me living up in Maine and him living down in Virginia made us any geographically closer than what we were. And as a matter of fact, to be quite honest with you, with the disease of Alzheimer's for the last maybe three years or so, his mind started to deteriorate and he started to go downhill pretty quickly. And we lost him probably further back than just that year point. So it has been a long-term thing that has been going on with the, with the disease of Alzheimer's. Anybody that's been through or had anybody go through dementia or Alzheimer's knows what I'm saying. Once you start to lose the mind, it really affects the people around them more than the actual person that's going through it, I feel. But with that being said, yesterday was my first one-year anniversary that fell into play with my dad, who was a example setter, who was an inspiration, who was a driver, who was a motivator, who was an entertainer, who was a piano player, who all these different things and these different qualities he had were were kind of made up who he was. This was this is where we were at. This is what I was faced with yesterday. And so what I did was I woke up in the morning and I thought to myself, okay, you know, am I going to live in the space of really having a really just bad day and be depressed and be down and be all these different things that I've got going on? Or will I lean in on the people that are around me to be able to understand that a lot of other people have gone through very similar situations or a lot of other people have been through just navigating the journey and trying to be able to figure out what's what and what's where. And at the end of the day, when we're all trying to be able to get through it, you know, we need each other. We need to support each other. We need to be able to be there for each other. Okay, so in general, this is the space that I was playing in. Do I play in the space of being really down in the dumps and depressed, or do I play in the space of trying to pull through, lean in on those around me, and to be able to do so? 
Well, the, the meaning of this podcast today is all the meaning of that tribe that's around me. It's about the people that are surrounded around me. So when I woke up in the morning, I opened up my phone. Well, I, I use that as a, ter- a terminology because it is an iPhone. It's basically just a bar, right? I don't open up anything, but I guess I do open up the screen. <laughs> so I open up the screen. You know, slide it and be able to uh, open it up and see what my notifications were, see what different stuff was going on. And I had at least 15 messages sitting in my inbox, sitting there waiting for me when I opened up, whether it's through email or text or whatever it was, of people wishing me well on this emotional day of being the one year anniversary of my father. Friends that were close to me, friends that were internet friends, different people all around me knowing that this was the day that was the one year anniversary. Now, How do you think that that made me feel? I sat back and I said, holy smokes, before I even had a chance to dive into the depressive state or try to dive into trying to be able to put one foot in front of the other, I've got all these people that were in my corner lifting me up. And they weren't saying stuff like, oh, I had somebody I lost to or no comparative things. It was all encouragement. It was all, I know, I know what you're going through. I'm here for you. I'm here to support you. I'm here to encourage you. I'm here to lift you up. I'm here to do everything just for you on this day that can be very difficult. And on top of that, it's my birthday weekend. So usually birthdays are meant to be something celebratory, right? Something like that. But, you know, this this is my first one, or actually my second one, because at the time we were kind of going through funeral services and everything else last year. But this is my first one without my dad either. And we're going to celebrate it in the neighborhood. And there's a couple guys around the neighborhood. We're going to have like this little cornhole tournament and some other stuff that we're going to be doing. So it's going to be great. But here's the thing. Tribe matters, guys. People matter. The people that you have reached out to or the people that you hold close to yourself in your tribe, in your circle, in that group of friends that you have should be the ones that did exactly as happened to me when I woke up first thing in the morning and I understood that I had 15 messages and they happened all throughout the day. They happened when I went on lives. They did every People were reaching out to me that I don't even know. I've never met in person, but they wanted to reach out to me to see if I was okay. Those are the people that were part of my tribe. They're the people that are in my circle. Those are the people that are lifting me up to encourage me. So then I got really reflective last night as I went to bed. And I said to myself, man, you know what? At the end of the day, how amazing is it that I've built a tribe around me of people that care? How important is it to me to be successful in my weight loss journey, my health journey, my mental journey, to know that I've got champions in my corner that are standing behind me just like Rocky's coach to be able to say, go get them. I think it's pretty amazing to me. I think it's something that we all need and we can go find and we can go get, but a lot of people feel lonely. A lot of people feel like they don't have those people to lift them and support them and encourage them. Or a lot of people feel like whatever relationships that they have in their families are broken, deteriorated, or whatever else, and so they feel like there's nowhere to go. So here's the thing that I wrote yesterday. It was it was a, it was a Instagram blog entry that I had done. And so what I did was I started it there, and then I kind of spread it throughout to be able to have a conversation around tribe and inner circle. And the quote itself went something like this. It wasn't exact because I don't have it right in front of me. But basically it said, when you're looking at your circle of friends, your circle of people that you call close to you, your circle of people that you consider to be your circle, your, your community, your tribe, if you look at that circle of friends and you take inventory of the friends that are in there and you are not inspired by each one of those individuals in that circle of friends that's there to support you, You're no longer living in a circle of friends. You're now living in a cage, a cage of friends. Now, what does that mean? That means those people that you consider to be your supporters, your encouragers, your uplifters, and anything like that in that circle that normally would push you forward and and challenge you to be better than what you are right now and challenge you to be more positive or the momentum to be able to move forward for you to achieve all the things you wanted to achieve. Instead, you're in a cage that holds you back and does not let you go because they break you down or they come at you with mental anguish or they 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 beat you down with verbal assaults or maybe they just don't support you whatsoever in the things that you want to do because they may be jealous of the things that you're accomplishing or the things that you're doing. So they want to bring you down to their level. All these things, we all have them in our lives, guys. So don't, let, let's, let's not just turn a blind eye to it and just say that, oh, all my friends are great and supportive. All of us have those detractors. 
all of us have those cancers in our group and our circle of friends that we just accept for who they are because they're who they are and they've always been that way. And we just accept them because, oh, you know, they're, they're good people. It's okay. It's just like, let's just say their name is Todd, right? How many times have you heard, oh, it's just Todd. That's just what he does. Uh, it's, it's just Janet. That's, what, that's just what Janet does. Well, why are we accepting the fact that we are just accepting the fact that that's what Janet and Todd does when rather trying to either fix the situation, let them know what's going on, or disassociating ourselves and moving that on from that cancerous battle that we have to deal with every single day? How many of your friends do you want to come to the table to be a positive influence on, but then they look at you and they say, oh, listen, I don't need to hear your stupid positivity. I don't need to hear that. I like living in this space that I'm in right now. Life sucks, and that's the way it is, and that's just where I want to go. How many people in your life do you have that do that if you try to be a positive influence on them? Or I don't want to hear that because that's not real life, man. All you do is talk about sunshine, roses, and unicorns. I need to hear about the real life stuff, dude. Night. You know why I put man and dude in front of those? Because I have some of those people in my life. I used to put quotes out all the time on Instagram and on Facebook. Just a positive quote. That's all it was. I would I would I would steal it from the internet and be able to post it up there and say, hey guys, check out, check this out. This might be something to think about. Or check this out. It might be a little blog entry that I wrote about the post or about the quote that's on there. And I had two or three people in my life that looked at me and said, Listen, enough about the stupid positivity, dude. Like seriously. Life's not that easy. Thanks so much for putting some words on something, but it doesn't fix the situation that I'm in financial debt or ruin. It doesn't fix the situation that I'm in a bad marriage or I'm in a breakup with somebody. It doesn't fix the situation, whatever it is, right? They, they, they layered on all these different things that are going on in their lives that are horrible and terrible, and they you know want to be rid of the whole entire situation, but they can't, so then they take it out on you. Because you want to be a positive influence or you want to be a positive patty or a unicorn and rainbow kind of person at that moment in time. So when I read this this adage or phrase that somebody had put out that said, if you're looking at your circle of friends, the ones that are there to, that, that are there to support you and lift you up, and you're not inspired by them, but rather nervous around them or trepidatious, if that's a word, right? All these different things that we're trying to do, we're afraid to go to them with it because they'll be have a negative approach to it. They'll have the the pessimism, the overall, you can't do that because that's just not what we're meant to do or whatever. And you're afraid to go to those people that are in your circle that are supposed to be there to lift you up. You are now living in a cage. That stood out to me and smacked me in the face like a ton of bricks. Because I said to myself, I still, even though I've surrounded myself, I had 15 messages of support, encouragement that weren't, wasn't even asked for. It didn't even have to require a post for me to put out there or require a conversation for me to have. They just knew. Those are the people that I need in my tribe. Those are the people that I need in my corner. Those are the people that I need to encourage me and lift me up and carry me forward with wherever I need to go and whatever I need to do in life in general, right? Don't we all need that? I mean, I think we all need some form of positivity and encouragement in our lives. So whatever we're trying to go for, so whether it's financial goals, weight loss goals, overall bucket list items, whatever it is you're trying to go for, you want people to stand behind you and say, yes, or give you the push that you need to be able to keep you on the path that you need to because our stupid heads get in the way and we start to doubt ourselves and we start to kind of get in this space of I can't do that because it's just not accepted and or I can't do that because it's not normal or I can't do that because I'm, I'm a human being and, and I'm not perfect. At the end of the day, I need those 15 people that sent 15 messages to me in my corner, in my tribe, doing what I have to do for me to move forward for me to then become the best version of me. And it stood out to me, guys. It stood out to me. It stood out to me because I also had people that wanted to make it about them. Now, I get it. It's normal. Sometimes when you don't want to talk about death or you don't want to talk about anything that's sad or anything like that, you kind of come to the table with a relatable story, right? Like, I went through this and I did this. But at the moment in time that you know that I'm suffering or I'm going through something at that moment in time, I know it's relatable to be able to do that. But maybe just a hand or a pat on the back or a kiss on the cheek or whatever it is just to say, I'm here for you. 
You can layer in the fact that, listen, I've been through something very similar. I know what you're going through. I can relate, but I'm here for you. And that's it. I encourage you. I want you to be to know that I'm a resource for you. I want you to be able to know that you can reach out to me to do that. Something that Ty and I talked about was to have the trust with somebody to know that you can go to somebody is so super helpful when it comes to mental health in the world. When we think we don't have anybody to go to, that's when bad things happen. That's when suicides happen. That's when depression happens. That's when overdosing on medications. That's when drugs and alcohol and all those other things, the coping mechanisms that we have that are out there, we lean in on those because we feel desperate and we don't have anybody to go to at that moment in time. When rather, if I had a tribe that was there for me to say, I've got a hand for you. I can pull you out of that hole. I'm here for you. Just to know that simple fact that I've got somebody in my corner to actually talk to about it or vent about it or be pissed off about it, that helps tremendously. I knew that the rest of my day, no matter what I was going through, I had 15 people in my hip pocket to know that I could reach out to any of them at any given time during that time frame to relate to, to have conversations about. And sometimes maybe I didn't want to talk about it at that moment in time. I just wanted to kind of grieve and I just wanted to be in the place of me just going through it. And doing the things that I need to do. And I'll come to you when I need to. But for you to say, I'm here if you need it, that's all I need. That's what I needed to know that I have a tribe of people that is there for me. My good buddy John even texted me later on in the afternoon when he saw the post that I put out. When he saw the Billy Joel Piano Man song playing in the background with me and my my dad at, at a function that we had gone to a couple years back. One of the last times that he was really out and about in public. He was really struggling that day. He he wasn't. Re- you could definitely tell that he was um he was in the early stages of it getting pretty bad, where he was forgetting even just the conversations he was having a couple minutes before. He was pacing around and didn't really understand the concept that his dad, his own father, had just died, and we were there together. So it was an emotional photo that I put out there. But I did like a before and after. I had, I put on the same suit that I had on, same hat that I had on. I did kind of like a, a photo shoot and then flipped over to the one that we did at the funeral home of my, my grandfather passing, which he didn't remember, but he was there and actually showed emotion, which was amazing. And when you when you fall into Alzheimer's, you don't you don't have a lot of emotion when you when you get into the throes of things because you don't really know. You don't you can't put two and two together a lot of times. Or at least the the version of the Alzheimer's that he had, you couldn't. So when I put that post out, my buddy John Giordano, anybody else who else knows is the mud hustler here on a lot of the social media platforms. He sent me some hearts and he said to me, that piano man really broke me down, man. And I miss you and just know I'm here. I needed that more than anything. That's my buddy. Right, we haven't been able to see each other because of the whole COVID thing. We've been quarantined, stuck up in different places because our two states can't get along, and we uh we're in this whole functionality of I can't travel from one state to the next because you know they're arguing with each other about the the safety of different things. But I know I'm following the rules and I'm doing what I need to do. But I miss my friend, and I knew that he was there for me no matter what. I could literally go six months without talking to that guy, and I know the second that I pick up the phone or the second that we give a message to each other, it's just like I'm talking to my best friend from yesterday. That's what a tribe is to me. That's what people that matter in your life is to me. That's when I know that when I look at my circle, I know that these people, even though I know that they struggle, I know that they go through downs and ups. I know that they are going through crap in their lives as well. But I know at any given time, if I snap my finger, they'd be there for me, whether it's through voice whether it's in person, whether it's traveling to wherever it's got to travel to, to get there, to be there for me. I know that they're in that circle for me and with me. He's one of them. And that makes me feel good. And I think you should feel good about the people that are in your tribe. And if you don't have people in your tribe or your circle of friends that make you feel better, that lift you up, that encourage you, that keep you moving forward towards your goals and your aspirations, it might be time to take a look at what that tribe really looks like or that circle looks like and you might be it might be time to actually do some spring cleaning 
Now, I'm not saying get rid of them. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not saying say I'm done with you and cut them off. What I am saying is you can then start to incorporate some of those positive influences in your life a whole lot more and maybe put some of those negative influences on the back burner at least. I had a conversation just a couple weeks ago, and I'll share it with you guys. A couple weeks ago, I had a conversation with somebody that basically was negative, negative, negative about everything. Every post that I made, everything that I did, I was on TikTok. They thought that was childish. All the different stuff that I was doing, all the social media aspect of things, along with my regular full-time job. And they said, you know, you're 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 playing down this space, space that has no end, that has no future, has no nothing. You're not making money off of it. You're not doing any of those things. Just a negative influence. But I consider them to be a long friend of mine since pretty much high school, just literally berating and berating and never really coming to me to say that you're a failure or you're this, that, and the other, but they made me feel that way. And when I felt that way, I felt like I couldn't accomplish anything and I felt like I was not worthy and I felt like I was down in the dumps and I felt like just in general, like I was a piece of crap. You know, and I went to go verbalize that to them and say, I need positivity in my life. And they said, get out of here with that BS. I don't need to hear that. I said, okay, that's it. That's it. Listen, I'm not done with you. I'm not I'm not over being a friend with you because I still consider you to be a friend and you've been there through me for me through some pretty thick th- times and I know you're probably going through some stuff on your own end that makes you feel the way that you do right now, but at the end of the day, I need positive influences in my life, so I'm going to talk to you a whole lot less. Until you're willing to accept the fact that I'm going to be living in this space that I think I can do things that I need to do and I need encouragement and I want to be able to move forward in this space of believing in dreams and shooting for the sky and whatever other euphemisms you want to put in there or any other acronyms or whatever words I want to use here that's going to be able to describe a positive can-do attitude. You don't want to be a part of that until you're willing to be able to accept that that's who I am and that's the space that I'm playing in. Come back when you're ready. Because I'm not ready to accept you. It took a lot of coverage, a lot of uh, courage to do that, right? It took a lot of bravery to sit back and say to them, "Hey, listen, you know, I uh, it's not working for me because I've known them for twenty some odd years, and at the end of the day, if it takes work for me to have a friendship with these people and I'm bothered by it, then that's the issue." If you have people in your life that you have to work to try to get a positive influence or try to be able to move forward or whatever, and I'm okay with friends that are positive but also realists, right? I'm okay with friends looking at you going, okay, listen, let's think about both sides of the equation. I'm okay with having the devil's advocate around your corner, but I'm not okay with somebody that looks at you and says you can't accomplish something or you're not meant to do that or why are you doing that just because of whatever reason or they're they're taking a look at what your intentions are or they're taking a look at whatever. You don't need that. Surround yourself with people that are literally encouragers and lifters and people that are there for you and look at you just like you look at them as somebody that you're inspired by. Instead of, here's another part. I've seen these relationships and my wife used to have this in a relationship. She had a great friend for years and years and years that she used to drink with and party with and they used to be, I mean, like literally inseparable. And then when she quit drinking, all of a sudden, a couple of these friends that she was in the trenches with didn't want anything to do with her anymore. And all of a sudden, she had to work harder to try to gain their friendship back or try to be able to have conversations with her where she felt like she was grinding just to be able to be acknowledged by these people that were supposed to be her best friends. How sad is that? Just because she quit drinking and just because she quit partying and just because she wasn't like the crazy person that she used to be, even though she's still her own person, she still got the same mind, she still got the same bubbly, wonderful, amazing, sexy personality that I know. She's got all those things going for, but because she quit drinking, these people said, yeah, I'm all set with you and I'm, you know, I'm done with you. They didn't say it verbally, but you could see it by their actions. They didn't want to hang out with her. And then one night her friend was actually drinking. And came to her and said it to her. I don't know how to talk to you anymore. Now, for somebody that quit drinking, that was an alcoholic at one time, and decided I'm going to make better decisions in my life and this is what I'm going to do. And now she's nine years sober, never picked up a drink ever ever since then. So proud of her. But literally, at the end of the day, 
How do you think that feels to somebody that suffers from that kind of stuff, that literally used alcohol to cope and literally used alcohol in all different aspects of life? And because she got ill, she decided I'm going to fix my life and move forward and to have some of her best friends look at her and say, I like you better when you were an alcoholic. Guys, this is what I mean. Take inventory of your tribe. Look at who your circle is. If you have negative influences in your circle, that it takes you work to be able to gain that friendship, to be able to gain that adoration, to gain that acceptance and whatever else, if it takes work for you to get there, then you've got the wrong people in your circle. Now, I know it's easier said than done to be able to say, just move on. But listen, I'm 47 years old as of this weekend. Happy birthday to me. Thanks so much. I appreciate that. I'm 47 years old as of this weekend. I've got no time to sit back and have to try to work for acceptance by you. I've got no time to have to sit back and say, hey, uh, can you like me? Because I, I really like you to like me. I'd like you to be my friend. Instead, I want people that look at me and go, I want to be a part of what he's doing. I want to be a part of, I want to be a friend to that guy because he's a good guy and he's a positive influence and he's a grinder, and he works hard, and he busts his ass, and he does all those things. I want to be that guy that people want to be a part of, and I don't have to work for acceptance, and I don't have to work for you to be part of my tribe, or I have to ask you to come encourage me. Instead, you jump right in, into the fire, no matter what, and say, I'm here with you. I'm hand in hand with you. I'm in the trenches with you. So it's interesting, the whole perspective of me going through the depression and downstage of my father's death of a year ago to understanding and realizing I need to really, truly look at what my inventory looks like. And you know what? Here's the other part that I hear from a lot of people whenever we have this conversation, because we've talked about this on the podcast before. Here's the thing. You may have family members that are the worst in the world for this in this case, where they think that they're meaning well, and they're coming to you, and they're degrading you, or they're berating you, or they're looking at you saying, you're not worthy of this, because listen, you know what, you always fail, you're always falling, you never follow through on your weight loss, you never follow through on your goals, you know, you're, you're, you're horrible at relationships, you're always cheating, or whatever else, and they have all these opinions, and they've got all this stuff going on in their heads, and they think they're coming to you because they're family, they can express themselves to you, they're just as toxic as those negative friends that you have around. I'm sorry. They are. And if you got to get to a place where you've got to navigate that space to be able to say, I'm all set. I don't need you in my life right now. Come back to me when you're ready to accept the fact that I'm good. I'm good with where I'm at. I'm good with who I am. And if you don't like me for who I am, then go find somebody else to berate because I'm not going to deal with it anymore. And again, I say it just like I said it all the other times. It's easier said than done. But you deserve it. You deserve to have people rooting for you. You deserve to have the 15 messages and calls waiting for you in the morning when you know your day is going to be a bad day and they're there for you already with guns blazing, ready to go, to be there in your tribe, lifting you up and encouraging you, knowing that it's going to be difficult before you even have to express it. You need people that if you go down the road of saying, I want to try to lose weight, not the ones that say to you, well, you failed so many times before, I'll believe it when I see it, but rather saying, let's do it together. Let's do whatever we got to do. I'm in it with you. I'm in the trenches with you. Let's go. Or I want to open a business. Okay, awesome. What can I do to help? Let me be there for you. Instead of, uh, you know, this is such a big risk. It's just any other. I know devil's advocate. But at the end of the day, why don't you encourage me? And then we can talk about that down the road. Let's get excited. Let's do the things that I want to do in my life and accomplish some goals that I want to accomplish and not try to break me down, but rather lift me up. You deserve it. I deserve it. We all do. You got to find them, guys. I found some of these tribe members in the strangest of places. I found probably six or seven people just on the app of TikTok that I've grown close friendships with that are literally in my trenches with me. They're in my tribe with me. They're there with me every morning to say, hey, good morning. I hope your day is well. I, I know you're going to have a rough day this day or, hey, happy birthday or whatever it is that they're trying to be able to do. They're there to lift me up no matter what. And I found them online, guys. It doesn't just have to be people that you know in your town. It doesn't just have to be people that you know in your family. These people care about me, and that's humbling and amazing and exciting at the same time. You deserve the same. So if it does take you to go out on social media, whether it's on Instagram, TikTok, whatever, Facebook, et cetera, 
Go do it. Find your tribe. Start to build your resources. Get your armor and start to put that bad boy on filled with people that are in your corner lifting you up, encouraging you, and getting you to where you need to be because you deserve it. The sky's the limit for all the things you want to be able to accomplish. Don't let one or two people be the people that break you down and start to hold you down and and not let you float to where you got to float to to be able to be the star and go where you need to go. Don't let it happen. Don't let it be those pessimist realists, but let it be a positive realist. Somebody that looks at you and says, you can can accomplish it. Yeah, but at the end of the day, it's going to be difficult. It's going to take work. It's going to take some stuff. Let's do it together. I'm in there with you. I know I'm there with you. Rather than it's going to take a lot of work and you don't know how to do that. So good luck. That's just BS. You need encouragers. Lifter uppers. People that inspire you in your circle. I hope that helps you guys. I hope you go back and take inventory. Take a look at it. I'm not saying go over there and just rid yourself of all the friends, but it might be good to have a conversation. Go and have a conversation with those people and say, hey, listen, you know what? This isn't working out for me right now because I need I need positivity in my life. I need somebody that's going to encourage me. Can you help me with that? Can you be that person for me? If not, you know what? I might You might see me kind of back off a little bit because I need people around me that are going to help me go the direction I want to go in. At least start the conversation, right? At least start it. I appreciate every single one of you guys on this podcast, the people that listen, the people that share feedback, the people that have left posts, texts, Instagram notes, anything, because you care. And I care about you. And I think that's awesome. We all deserve that. We just got to go find it. Guys, have a great day. Have a great weekend. I'll be celebrating my birthday this weekend, and I hope that you are well. I hope that you are wise, and I hope that you are healthy all weekend long. Okay? Talk soon. Thank you for listening to today's podcast. Please do us a favor and leave feedback and a five-star rating on whatever platform that you use.